Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. James and I are up early. We are fishing in an estuary and we're fishing for bass and bream. Now we're trying to keep quiet. We're only in we're only in five minutes of water. The tide has just started to flood. It is an absolutely stunning morning. Considering the considering the bad weather that we've been having, we are absolutely blessed this morning. Now, the fish that we're fishing for are bass and bream. They find they fish, I find, better on a flooding time. Can you hear what that was? What was that? That noise there was a curl you. That was an owl. Them curlews. I love the sound of them. It, it, it's just the sound of an estuary on a morning. It's uh, a. <laughs> I love a bird too. Yeah. And an owl. Yeah, bass and bream, like I say, they fish better. They feed on a flooding tide. So we've got here at low tide. The tide is going in that direction. They will move past us as they start feeding. As the tide starts flooding in and it starts getting deeper, we'll start getting more bites. I just started out some bites, but we're standing up. James has already informed me that today is going to be a father against son session. Yep. You tied up all your own rigs last night, didn't you? Yep. I'll show you those rigs in a second when it gets light. I just thought I would come and say good morning because it's such a swimming start. I'm doing now is because the area that we're fishing in. There are going to be crabs, there are going to be other little fish, little blennies, little gobies, maybe even like little corkwing wrasse. Little, little tiny pecking bites. I'm fishing with ragworm. I like fishing with worm for bring. Some people swear by using razor clams, some people swear by using peeler crabs. I like using worm. If there's going to be a lot of this around, our day is going to be quite difficult. We're fishing four rods, two each, and I've knocked up some extra hook lengths. So that in a situation like this, when I bring one in, I can just clip another one on and send it straight out. Yeah, that's all it is there, look. And on this one, we've got a little locked in lead. Yeah, this is all the hook lengths are. Two to two and a half feet of 20 pound fluoro, a couple of beads and today because I'm fishing worm I'm fishing little ragworms I'm using one or specimen extras I'm using a J hook if I was using crab I would use a chino or something like that yeah. the bites that you get off bream are usually like a little peck and like whack or you'll just see your rod tip just go and lines start peeling off. So you have the drag on these. I have set the drag on these as not locked up but put tight enough. There's two schools of thought. You either want to have next to no drag so they can pull it or you want them to hook themselves. Now bass, you'll generally get like a trembling, a pecking bite on them. Yeah, 
That weed's really thick in here. I might move us to a different spot. If we haven't had anything in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to move us to a different spot. There's a lot of weed here. Let's reel them in and try somewhere else. Yeah. Great mops of weed like this. With great mops of weed like that. If your bait's on the bottom and it's covered in weed, now it's going to find it. Yeah, lovely morning for it now. See all these little fish coming past here, gentle. See them? Let look. Well, this has been very slow. And now the wind's turned. We're in the full force of the tide, so we're getting lots and lots of weed and the wind has turned around completely 180 degrees. So we're going to change our plans, aren't we? Yep. Risky for a biscuit, so James yep. says. Yep. Dad, I can't see, I can't see. How did you do that if I can't see, Dad? What? See, well, it's you that's got your hat on the wrong way around. Don't start getting lippy with me. I still can't see. The there, look, see. According to James, we need to risk it for a biscuit. Let's go. Yep. Got lots of fish, James. It's going to be heavy, though. Oh. Well, it's going to be heavy. Whoa, whoa, you just crush it off. Just, just trying too hard, you just need to just take your time with it. The fishing up the estuary was absolutely terrible. Just getting completely weeded out. And here now we're sat wind against tide, so swinging about like a loony. Yep. But James has landed yep. the first fish of the session. Yes. Now I'm going to hold on to it because it is a bit spiky. And slimy. A lovely little coach brain. Awesome. They have got a good row of spikes up on top of here. It was a good fighter as well. It was a good fighter, was it? Yeah. What was the fight like? Was it like... Yeah, it was like that. It was like that. I was pulling it back and I was pulling it down. Okay. Yeah, we're going to... Fish here for maybe another 10 or 15 minutes. Now that we've got him a fish, I'm happy. I can go home. I don't like to blank. I don't like to catch nothing. So now that we've caught a fish, I feel like we can maybe we'll go and try one more place, see if we can't get a better sit at anchor. And we'll get him home and get him some second breakfast. Oh, the sun's come out. The sun's come out, so I'll show you this fish in the sun. That's well, got some lovely blue spots on, hasn't it? Yeah. We're gonna let it go. Brilliant bite, wasn't it, James? Yeah. The road just arched over. Put the net ready. Just wait there, then. Just 
just feel like a dream. These, these coach bream really do fight above their weight class. That is a big one. There you go, see. Dad, you think that one's the keeper? A very pretty one, isn't it? That one's the keeper. I don't, I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to think about that. I think this guy. I'll check what the minimum landing size is for these. He's a pretty one, though, isn't he? That's the rig that I was using, it was just sliding lead to a swivel and then a hook length. And the hook length was two and a half foot, 20 pound floor row, a couple of beads and a load of head hook ragworm. Nothing complicated at all. James, that is an absolutely brilliant black green. Now this is one that we're going to take home. That was so hard. James has just nailed like a two and a half pound black green. My arm, my arm hit. That is a stunning black green caught up in the river as well. That is definitely worth a photo. It is a big fish. Right, hold the line. Wrap it round, wrap it round. Don't wrap it round, it's going to slide through. Oh, that was so hard. That was so hard because I really didn't think. So what have you got there then, James? A black bream. An absolute stunner of a black bream. You, sir, have an invite to dinner. Yes. Get him in the water bucket. Wasn't expecting to clack to Pula. Wasn't expecting to catch a black brain. Thought it was going to be a cooch or a gilt head. But we'll take a black brain. Because black brain are absolutely delicious. Oh, it looks like quite a tiny crack. Yeah, I caught it up in a bucket when I was stuffing the water up. But yeah, I didn't get a chance to turn the camera on now. We just saw a little bit of a trembling bite. James, come here, you can talk about it. Ooh, that fish will be a... Right, what was that like? We just saw a little bit of a bite, didn't we? Yeah, and we thought it would be a... And so, you picked up the rod, yeah. and then what happened? Boom. It just went, woof. So you lifted it up, and you just wound it in. Yep. Well done. That is, that is quite a big black brain, that. We're going to eat that one. Yeah. The there do seem to be loads of these down there. Just another little spiky coochie coo.
Those little coochies are just, just like piranhas. Just like constantly on the bait. Now this is what it should have been like up the river. Oh, another pink one. All right, another pink one. Tell you what, he, he gave a really hard bite, didn't he? Yeah. It's not as big as the one I. No, it's not as big as the one we got earlier, is it? Okay. Oh, he nearly pulled the rod over the side, didn't he? Yeah. Good job for getting the net so quick. Holding out for that gilt head. There we go, James has had another little cooch bream. We have had stacks of these today. Just like a little red piranha, aren't they? <laughs> these are actually, these are our last baits. So I think, oh. oh. oh slightly bigger pinky. What was I just saying? These guys are just like piranhas, aren't they? I might do a photo of that one too. They're a really pretty one. Yeah. As I was saying, these are our last baits. So we're just going to fish out the baits we've got out and then we're going to pack up. That black bream of James's, we're going to scale it, we're going to gut it and we're going to take it round to Jim's. Here is James's wonderful black bream. Now I've already gutted it. All I did there was I opened up the belly cavity and took all the insides out. Now I'm going to scale it, which simply means taking all the scales off. Now you can use the back of a knife and all you do is you just rub up against it. But I prefer to use a spoon, which is just a teaspoon that I keep on the boat. The reason being is because you can't cut yourself on a teaspoon. Only with a sharp spoon. Now it's not going to be too much of a problem scaling it here because I'm still outside on the boat. But as soon as you go and start rubbing the scales like that, they just fly everywhere. So the easiest thing to do is to scale it underwater. So I've just got a bucket full of water here. All you do is keep the fish submerged underwater. All you do is you keep the fish submerged underwater and then scrape up against the grain. Yeah, but you can see straight away where those scales are coming off, can't you? So, you do be careful though, because all of these are have got a spikes. All of them are spikes. All of these have got a spike. All of those have got a spike, they've got a spike, they've got a spike, they've got a spike. There are spikes everywhere on this fish. Except the scales. Yeah, the scales. Some scales are still quite sharp. Yeah. Right, so you're just rubbing them all up backwards. Look. You can feel it, can't you, when it's scraping, when the scales are yeah. coming off. Don't forget, oh, you missed some. There you go. Good man. And there we go. That's all the scales taken off completely on both sides. And all of the scales will now be under the water in here. No mess at all, and all you'll do there is. See them all? That guy's ready for the kitchen. James and I have brought the bream around to Jim's. There is James's wonderful black bream. Now, we couldn't cook it straight away, so all we did was I just scaled it, gutted it, and vacuum packed it. That's absolutely perfect for prepping your fish.
if you if you catch too much or like we, would, we couldn't cook it straight away vacuum packing it and freezing it keeps it in perfect condition and a couple of pieces of cooch bream cooch bream fillets that were caught on a charter there is another video where we actually caught that fish i'll tag that into the description but i am very proud of you james yeah. that brack that brack bream that no. black bream was on a rig that you tied yourself you baited yourself yeah. and you reeled it in all by yeah. yourself so yeah it's a special one and we're just discussing how we're going to cook them sorry Jean, you said you're going to cook right. the black bream you're going to, it's going to be on a bed, uh, black bed of vegetables we'll roast some vegetables and potatoes and then uh, james will want his fish as simple as possible uh, we'll trim the fish up season it with some butter and lemon juice and then we'll bake that on top of the vegetables and for us with the cooch bream we will make up indian spiced butter and marinate the fish in that for a few minutes then pan fry it with some onion and you're just topping the beans are you james we are going to have just pick some of the last of the green beans and we'll have those that one's a bit of a, that one's a bit of a non-conformist isn't he with some of these uh, salad potatoes perhaps in a little coconut milk wonderful James, we're ready. Yeah. Would you like to start the beans off? Yeah. Okay. So what are you doing here, James? So, if your beans are straight like this one, you take off the tips and cut so it. So you take off the long. little, take off the little bits on the cut top, it. don't you? But if it's a curved one like this one, you cut down like that. Okay. Cool. Just taking the fish out of the packs now. They have been fully scaled and they are thawed out now. So this is for James's fish. So what we get right, you're going to have a, just a bed of roasted, pota roasted vegetables, so it's going to be your peppers, your onions, potatoes. Yes, and we'll add some courgette and aubergine and thyme, basil, garlic, but I'll start with these harder vegetables. I always think they look like, well, either like a bird's beak or like a Like a, uh, a witch's fingernail or something like that. Yes, yeah. indeed. They aren't spicy, are they? They're no, these are a, a bit sweeter. I'm quite taken with them. Oh, since I know it's been a while since we've done any filming, but and I've had other things to contend with. One of your American followers sent us through those chili salts. Yes. I, I, I'm sorry I've not replied in thanks, but our lives have been somewhat dominated by other issues recently. Um, I've got his letter, but the <laughs> chili salts have produced much humour. Yeah, and, and some of them where they're like, jump. oh, that's delicious, that's really lovely. And there's one or two of them where you're like, <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. they were good. And uh, oh, yeah. another mention. Mm, carefully does it, James. Well done. Uh, George, I met your mum in Weymouth last week in the Quayside restaurant, which has restored my faith in fish cooking restaurants. <laughs> I've been looking for a simply grilled lemon sole with some potatoes and a bit of salad for oh I don't know 20 plus years I'm surprised at how thin these are they're much thinner than normal bell pepper aren't they they're lovely so anyway yes George George's mum hey, I <laughs> hope you appreciated the photograph George the roasting pan has been in the oven warming drizzle of oil Just I'm sure we've done things like this a few times before Four. I'm interested in the order at which you do things like I would have thought the potatoes because the potatoes would have taken longer to cook you would have done the potatoes first well the potatoes are in. going yeah. in now thank you for reminding me we'll pick up this is a bag of salad potatoes are you just putting the small ones in whole and the larger ones you're putting to keep them all I'm like? just going to keep the larger ones out because I'll cook those and I'll add some garlic to that little later and up the allotment earlier so I picked some thyme 
So just put that in. And there's some. Oh, some strong smells coming out. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, you can smell the basil I yeah. picked. Oh, it's heaven. So we'll add those softer herbs in. <laughs> bit of rest in the Bit of Oh, so you put both white and black pepper in there? Yes. Which is the black for the spice and it's the white for the heat, is that right? Black for flavour. Yeah. Bit of white. So, there we are. That is set at 200. So we'll give that 20 minutes. Grate some ginger. <laughs> Blimey, that pepper got right on my nose. Mm. And we'll crush some chilli. Oh, I, I do love the smell of that. It's, it's really fresh, isn't it? Mm. I'm a, I am a fan of that. I really do like um, ginger. Ginger. It's um, ginger beer or ginger biscuits. Oh, ginger. Ginger yes. squares, ginger cakes. What is it? What they um, I used to get them, and it was like a really stodgy cake, but ginger. Like ginger it used to just be called ginger squares. Well, we would be dark like Jamaican, Jamaican ginger yeah. cake down yeah. here. I like it. We custard or not? No, just slicing it. Yeah, but with a cup of tea. No, I used to. Have it with. In fact, actually, I was having this. I was having this discussion with with Ben the other day. It was about um, desserts with custard. Now I was saying loads of them like, oh, like this and custard, banana custard, and he was like, he thought, oh, unheard of. But well, old school ones like banana custard, I absolutely love them. Banana custard? I mean, you can put custard with pretty much anything, can't you? Put your thoughts in the comments. Yes, more cereal. custard. Put your thoughts in the comments. Except cereal, Dad. Except cereal, yeah, yeah. probably. Because I'll just be with. Like Cocoa pops and custard, is that right? I've always liked this for the crunch. I'm going to mince this garlic up, garlic up with the knife. So that is so a big one, wasn't it? It was like a daffodil bulb, that one. Indeed. And you do it really fine, just, yeah. so, it, just so it completely dissolves in the dish. Hopefully, yes. A right, little tip now. So there's some coarse sea salt. And we'll put that in. With Use the salt to kind of grind it up. Yes. The grains of salt act as a, a grinding agent. Pippi lemons. So you've got half of your stem of ginger, and then you've got three large cloves yeah, of garlic. There's a good teaspoon of grated ginger. And. Did, uh, did we ever show you the little video? When we've, uh, we've just recently come back from, from a trip to Canada, one of the restaurants that we went into, when they served like, a piece of lemon to squeeze onto your dish, they had a little hairnet that the half a lemon came in, so that when you squeezed it, all the pips and all the little pieces didn't go through the hairnet. It just went out. And when I saw it, I thought, are you? Uh, Not for the hairnet. For where is it? Uh, where it is was it? Used. It was used in the restaurant, so it was all lemony. Chili flakes. And are you going to you're going to melt all that together in the pan yeah. and then just pan fry it? Well, I'll probably put it in the microwave. This is ground cumin and a little bit of turmeric. If I had some garam masala, which a pinch of garam masala in as well. I'm just going to pan fry some red onion. Pan is just on warming at the moment. I'm going to do lots of onion and pepper with this one. 
Let's have a different shape. So we'll just leave those. To was that olive oil there or was that butter? No, that was just the vegetable oil. I was just going to say, is that the type of thing that you could do the day before? Mix oh. it up and to marinate it, or would you, you not want to do it that much? I don't think I you'd want to do it that long. I'm reduced to using uh, my <laughs> stationary scissors because the fish shears disintegrated. You need to be really careful with them because they are hella sharp. Like you grew up on spine underneath your thumbnail, didn't you? did indeed. Giving it a haircut, James. Mm, there's oregano and basil. Just make a heap there. Do you like the smell of that, James? Yeah. I do too. Pop that pan into the oven for Just to get these peppers roasted down nicely. Oh, that's 20 minutes. You've got 1 minute and 30 seconds left, haven't you? Time's well, that. Yeah, the potatoes are. will be ready nice. Just start, just soften yeah, a little. Just beginning to soften. These are these homegrown, are they? They are. I want the very ripest ones. What's the reason for that? Just because they're softer. And pop these in as well. For anyone not aware, this little tub here, all the off cuts and pieces, goes to the compost heap on the allotment. It does. Right, let's get. Not an eggplant emoji, James. Yep. Yep. That's I send you all the time. <laughs> I pop all those. I'm just pulling out the, the stalks, time yeah. stalks. To things like this, would you would you possibly add um, a liquid, I guess like, like a wine a, or a stock or a? You could put a splash of wine, a fish stock, veg stock. I'm just going to put a splash of water in. And there's basil and oregano. So James, put the rest of those in for me. Well done, James. Careful though, because that's very hot. I missed the fish. Yeah, I'm going to put the My fish in. Great black I'm green. not going to slash it because it'll dry it. It will be easier to li lift the fillets off if we don't cut them, otherwise, we're just going to end up with tiny bits of them. With my very filled one. Well done. We'll put him in. We'll take this one. I'll come out in the way because I can see that being a red hot. Mm. And you've softened up your peppers in there? Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's give those 15 minutes. And while they're cooking, we'll have a little bit of a clean down. Last thing for this one, I bought a stir fried coconut, mango, and lime sauce. Yes. If you were going to make that, I'm sorry, just, if you were going to make that up, how would you, how would you make it coconut up? Coconut milk. Tin, tin coconut milk. Yes. Some mango. And, uh, and a bit of mango lime. pulp. Or a really ripe mango. Skin. Brilliant. This. Is James? James is looking forward to his black bream that he caught everything himself and this cooch bream here with a would you say it was um, an Indian sauce? Indian spices wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Cumin, turmeric and then we used I'm ginger like new potatoes oh, There you go On the side there Perfect <laughs> Bit more 
don't know why everyone's whispering. I can, they can hear everything you're saying. <laughs> can hear everything you're saying on the camera. What's that? Is that, yes. that yeah. looks fantastic. Um, oh, what do you reckon? Spoon out the kitchen, I'll just hmm? my fork. Good, good. I'm gonna get stuck in too because that looks delicious. And that smells wonderful. It does. So what you thought so far? The sauce for this one mm. is going down very well. Mm. But the fish, James's fish, I think you caught mm. a delicious one, didn't you? Mm -hmm. That's very flavoursome. Mm. You found you found a bone. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were just saying there that was absolutely delicious. Every part of it. Even Elizabeth has cleaned her plate. Yeah. That the sauce in there. We were just talking about that. That packet sauce was <laughs> all of it. But the um, the the flavour that I got most through it, I mean it was it was the delicious cooked fish, but it was the ginger. I loved it because yes. I, mm. I like the ginger like coming ginger. through. And you mm. caught and cooked a most delicious bream, didn't you? There's nothing left but like a Tom and Jerry skeleton. Well done. Would you like that one again? You were comparing it. You said it's not as flaky as cordon pollock and whiting and things, but you'd still I think that bream is a lot like bass because it's a lot more of a meaty, chewier fish, isn't it? Mm. Different texture. <coughs> Shall we go and try and catch some more of those? Yes. I think so yes, too. <laughs> and, uh, what's the other fish you were going to catch for us, John? He's going to say turbot. <laughs> <laughs> or a slender John Dory. John Dory, yeah. John Dory, that's the one, yeah. James. Cod? No, a John Dory. Mm. Any, we what, don't get souls. What, no. Unicorns? Bigfoot? <laughs> anything, anything, anything else that's. John, are you waxing lyrical? Hmm? Oh, that was absolutely wonderful. Both dishes. Everybody's complimented the um, the cooch bream in the, the Indian sauce, isn't it? It was delicious. And now, now that we've picked the bones, we've got some desserts. <gasps> oh, yippee. And Carol's left us. Oh, mm. no. Lizzie and Carol have gone. Yeah. Oh, dear. I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. Bye bye. See you later. Bye, George. <laughs>